crypto recovery continue? That's today's big question. Welcome to The Daily Focus, June 20th, 2022. I'm Megha Chata of Focus, covering all things blockchain. The crypto market was back in the green Monday morning in Asia, with Dogecoin among the winners after a boost from Elon Musk. We'll take a look at that, plus JD.com's bumper digital yuan sales and a delay to South Korea's long-planned crypto tax coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. Let's kick off with a market update as there's been a recovery after last week's slump. Bitcoin headed above 20,000 US dollars Monday morning in Asia after falling as low as 17,700 US dollars on Sunday. Meanwhile, Ethereum surged 14% in 24 hours after dipping to less than 900 US dollars and was changing hands at above 1,000 US dollars. Dogecoin was another bright spot, gaining 12% through to Monday morning in Asia. That's after billionaire Elon Musk said that he would continue to support and buy the cryptocurrency. Musk's statement comes days after a complaint seeking a class action lawsuit against the Tesla and SpaceX CEO and his companies was filed alleging manipulation in Dogecoin's price. However, concerns over a crypto winter remain with the total global crypto market cap under 1 trillion US dollars for a seventh day. The US Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 75 basis points last week, the single largest increase since 1994. How will these efforts to curb rising inflation play out and could this affect the crypto markets? Joining us is Annabelle Huang, managing partner of Amber Group. It's great to have you with us, Annabelle. Thanks, good to be here again. Now we are in the midst of some very, very choppy times. What are your thoughts on the crypto market's response to the Fed's rate decision? What are your reading of the market at this point? There was all eyes on the Fed uh, minutes this week, uh, last week, last Wednesday. Um, for us, uh, we have seen that 75 basis points was fully priced in, so we expected the Fed to take the action and actually um, raise rates by 75 basis points. But uh, there was a recovery rally uh, going after it because um, the, a lot of the kind of the statements or forward guidance has been uh, actually more dovish than some others might have expected. Uh, we left some room for another 50 to 75 basis point hike uh, for the next meeting. Um, and I think everyone is um, is adjusting to it in terms of expectation. As you pointed out, we've had a bit of a bounce come in after the rate hike was announced. Possibly it was already built into the levels we are at. But will we see Bitcoin and the wider crypto markets kind of stay correlated with equities? What's your sense here? Yeah, I, I think in the short term, uh, all the risk assets will move in tandem just because we're in a very extreme risk off environment at the moment and it's very macro driven depending on a lot of the policies coming out of the central banks uh, in the US and looking at Japan as well and possibly elsewhere in Europe. Um, so it's quite an interesting time. Uh, Bitcoin uh, and the major tokens has, has moved largely almost one to one to its equities recently. And I think um, I at least personally expect that to persist uh, in the short term. But we are seeing some of the more crypto uh, or on-chain um, events that might happen uh, later this year as well, looking at the merge uh, and possibly other factors that might have uh, a decoupling effect uh, from crypto to, to risk assets in general. And hopefully that, that is to the upside. Well, it's really hard to call levels in markets like these when we're extremely choppy. But are we at the bottom of the crypto markets? What are the critical levels you are watching for? Where would we possibly see a bottom? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, and, and trust me, we have that discussion with clients uh, all day long. And um, from a technical perspective, I think where we are now, so at around 20K for Bitcoin and 1,000 for Ethereum is uh, some of a, of a resistance level or support level. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised personally if we do break it. Um, and I think the next level we're looking at is around uh, 18K for Bitcoin and possibly 800 for Ethereum. Uh, there is a CME gap level at 18.5 thousand and historically, you know, 90% of these are filled. So we might 
I see and that are like down there. This after all is Crypto Rising. Thanks Annabelle for joining us today. Now let's round up what else you need to know from around Asia. Chinese online retail giant JD.com saw bumper sales using the digital yuan over the course of its 618 shopping festival. Set up in 2004, the 18-day extravaganza celebrates the anniversary of the retailer's founding. 400 million yuan or around 60 million US dollars worth of sales were made using the digital currency, accounting for about 1% of the total sales during the event. JD Technologies said that exceeds the total historic volume of digital yuan transactions made until just before the festival began. Given that it started accepting the CBDC back in December 2020, that's a big deal. However, a date for a full rollout of the currency across China has still not been announced. You can find that story and more at forecast.news. Finally, over in South Korea, the country's planned tax on digital assets has been pushed back for two more years. But what will the delay mean for investors? Focus Danny Park has more. Formerly set to go into place on January 1, 2023, South Korea's 20% tax on crypto gains has now been postponed to 2025. The delay was announced at a briefing introducing the new government's roadmap for economic policy last week. President Yoon suk yeol previously said that the tax should not come until sufficient market infrastructure is prepared. Its implementation had already been set back by a year following a backlash from investors. Many were frustrated that the threshold for crypto gains was set at 2.5 million won as against 50 million won or around 39,000 US dollars for capital gains on stock. One expert told Forecast that market conditions aren't ideal at the moment either. 지금 어차피 뭐 이익이 안 나거든요. 사람 대부분 사람들이. 그래서 좀 장이 좋을 때 가세를 하기 시작해야 그 나름대로의 그 어떤 그 가세도 유익하고 그 다음에 시장 상황에서도 크게 영향을 받지 않는데 지금 같은 경우에 안 그래도 지금 시장이 아주 안 좋은데 위축돼 있는데 여기다 또 가세까지 하게 되면 정말은 굉장히 뭐그 설상 가상이라고 그러죠. O also said the extra time could be a bonus in terms of offering the chance to understand crypto in comparison to other assets better. 암호 자산 이 자산 같은 경우는 가치 평가의 어떤 기준 자체가 아직 그 학문적으로 정립이 돼 있지도 않아요. 어 장기적으로는 이좀 암호 자산에 대한 연구가 많이 이루어져서 여기에 대한 가치 평가 기준도 좀 마련되고 나름대로 그렇게 하는 것이 투자자를 보호하는 거고. Investor protection is also part of the government's roadmap with the upcoming Digital Assets Basic Act covering regulation on the issuance and listing of cryptocurrencies. For Forecast, I'm Danny Park. And that's your daily forecast from Asia to the world. Follow us on Twitter for the latest updates at forecast underscore news. Head to our website as well for more detail on all of today's top stories and a whole lot more. Until next time, I'm Forecast Mekha Shada. See you then. <laughs>